Hey guys, good evening. Welcome to Buy Bust Losses Monday, the WGM Laura Unuk edition. It's very good to see you here and just uh, a quick shout out to 2511, my dear friend and mod here. Uh, and a shout out to Chess Lions, both are friendly streamers and very good friends of this channel. It's very good to see you guys. Thank you. It's uh, very good to he be here at 2511. Uh, uh, so there you go. And please give 2511 a shout out. He's a great uh, friend of the channel. He's a great streamer. Hey, Fundament Corals, it's very good to see you. Hedgehog, my dear friend, it's very good to see you here too. And guys, uh, welcome to another edition of uh, My Best Losses. And let me give a shout out to Chess Lions before we proceed. A couple of very quick program announcements. Uh, I have played a match against uh, WGM Laura Unuk yesterday. I managed to avoid adoption. I won game five. Then Laura won five games in a row afterwards. Uh, and tomorrow is uh, a pretty interesting match. I'm playing, if you put Karyakin in, in, uh, in comma exclamation mark Karyakin, you will see the description. I am having a special edition of uh, um, Adopt Nicholas series. It's uh, dedicated to Grandmaster Sergei Karyakin. Sergei Karyakin is a member of a rather unique team. He was part. He was one of the four people who played a championship match for World Chess Champion. Uh, that's basically only. Kayakin, Magnus Carlsen, Fabiano Caruana, and Anand. So that's tomorrow uh, at noon New York time. Please join. The purpose of the purpose of this match is not so much for me to avoid adoption, which I would be obviously really happy to do, but uh, you know the chances of it is based on the ratings differences are about four percent. The real reason for the match and there is justification for it, we would love to see somebody as strong as Grandmaster Karyakin to come to Twitch and stream to all of us. So that's that's also the idea here. Uh, yes, uh, Chess Lions, we had rather interesting accuracy throughout the match. And I'm actually going to show you the... This is basically the outline. Don't look at the first two of the, the two bullet games. Uh, I had, and I'm going to actually show this game, uh, I had a pretty atrocious accuracy. I basically ended up being caught in an opening trap that somehow I wasn't prepared for. Um, and basically the accuracy was great across the board. I even managed to lose a game in which I had accuracy over 94% uh, and so on. And anyway, it was a very good match. Oh, wow. Did we... Did you get the raid? All right, guys. For those of you who have joined me, this is this this is my channel, uh, and this is a weekly show on this channel, which is called My Best Losses. It's uh, My Best Losses, dedicated to one and only WGM Laura Unuk. She is uh, she is a member of the Chiquitas, and I'm going to give Chiquitas a quick shout out. Basically, I played a match against her. I managed to win the game number five. Thank you, Zanf13, for the follow. That's very greatly appreciated. And um, let's uh, take a quick look at, uh, at the games. I'm going to show you the very first game we played. Uh, and, you know, I have to make an admission. And, uh, you know, we're going to take a look at the several of these games. I'm going to turn the analysis board so you can even see the evaluations. The issue I ran into this match was that uh, I did not really feel, you know, the Zen of Botvinnik Carl's Gambit. Botvinnik Carl's Gambit for uh, you know, f is familiar to people who play e4 and play against Karo Khan. It's characterized by e4, e4, c6, d4, d, uh, d5, e5, which is the beginning of the tal variation, and then c5, which appears to be a loss of a tempo, and 
you know, oh, thank you, Chess Lions. That's very greatly appreciated. I'm trying to figure out what's the best way to use a green screen. And I kind of like this layout uh, better than the old one. Anyway, uh, so it's interesting that, uh, you know, white, uh, you know, plays e4, e5, and black responds with uh, c6, followed with c5. I have to admit that I've historically played the line that begins with knight e2, and, uh, you know, I'm reasonably familiar with the theory there, and, uh, you know, the... But I have to admit, the idea behind that line is if uh, you play c4 immediately, exchange and d4 uh, right away actually benefits black. So something like, you know, something like c3, cd4, it actually favors black because of the queen side's uh, issues. And also the, the pawn of d4 has pro can prove to be weak. Uh, knight e2 instead of knight e3 because that's basically stop immediate bishop g4. I have played this many times and I have to say we, uh, Laura and I, hey Korean Ameris American chess, no, thank you, greatly appreciate it. That's very kind of you to say that about the analysis. That's that's very nice. Um, so I, I don't know, I wasn't comfortable playing it. Just the just couple of and I'm gonna show you a couple of games. They're all theoretical. C3, knight c6, e6. And in this line, incidentally, uh, what Laura did was she trans transmogrified this position into a worse, into a French defense-like structure. And very frankly, I was I was confused by that and I didn't find the best continuation in this position, which is why it, uh, you know, one of the reasons why this was probably my very first game of the match. I was pretty nervous and I have to admit I was very nervous because, um, you know, it's pretty hard to play one match on Sunday against WGM Laura Unuk and then play face Sergei Karyakin, who is a 2700 plus player. Uh, you know, on Tuesday, it's uh, it was very hard. Yeah, uh, you know, this is actually all theory, and if you look closer, it's uh, you know, it's not the whole opening is not supposed to work. You know, e4, c6, that's fine, that's standard Karakan, e5, d4, d5, e5, c5. So basically, uh, black used two tempi to get from c6 to c5, and I have to admit. I played this a lot. I played lots of games against uh, WGM Dina Belenkaya, and I'm still searching for the Zen of this position, to be very frank with you. Anyway, so I'm gonna just show you very briefly where I, uh, you know, lost the track here. Knight h6, be, 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 believe it or not, is the best move in this position, and uh, this is equal position, uh, you know, the normal plan for white that I found only after I played this game is to play knight d2 and knight f3. And, uh, you know, and that trans would translate this position into a French defense type of position, which would be actually perfectly fine. Uh, what happened in the game is that I took an opportun first opportunity to make a mistake and I played knight g3, which, believe it or not, is... Ah, very close to being a losing move. And, uh, you know, my explanation for this is, frankly, I was outplayed in the opening, which doesn't happen very often to me in these matches. And uh, on top of it, I was out psyched because normally when you play Botvinnik Karls, the, you know, white plan is to take on c5, let go of the pawn on e5, and, you know, it's probably better if I show you this before f4, and then push b4, and then play against this knight on e5, and also uh, if bishop ends up f5, there is a strong, you know, then black, the white knight can end up on d4 where it challenges that knight. And if uh, that knight gets withdrawn, you have f4, f5. I kind of played this and I was familiar with this plan because, you know, I this is one of the reasons I played f4. 
but uh, your computer says it's premature and that's probably true because knight h6 basically prevents white for pursuing any kind of f f4 f5 plan and i played knight g3 because i was still hoping that the right moment push f5 and uh, you know but that's a wrong move because then uh, black's pressure on d4 pawn becomes too strong to handle in other words you know if you look here after queen b6 you have the pawn the knight and the queen uh you know pressuring the pressuring the pawn and the only pawn and the queen are defending d4 bishop e3 is a problem because of queen b2 and you know bringing back the knight to e2 is not exactly the good good way to handle it so i did what somebody who is outplayed in the opening usually does i decided all right you know what i am just going to go and play my bank let let laura have the pawn so bishop d3 which i'm happy to see is actually computer's best move in this position it was basically a pawn sacrifice which of course laura immediately took that's understandable in the best move uh, I should have played queen e2 instead of allowing queen d4 and, you know, and very frankly, rather quickly here, I was uh, crushed, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to show you the, the rest of the game, uh, not because I played particularly well, but because it uh, illustrates the pitfalls you have when you're playing critical variations and you forget the line. Um, I was, you know, I continued to play Vabank, including Castle by choice, uh, which computer obviously hates, into a potential, you know, open chat, uh, you know, uh, sh uh, double check, and, you know, and I even sacrificed the rook, and then I played Vabank, but you know there is little there to compensate for the rook yeah exactly dritman 13 it looks like a really bad variation of the steinitz french that's uh, that's exactly right and you know the rest of the game is not or not really interesting i really had no chance there is not enough power power for white to play this and of course somebody who is as strong as laura is obviously gonna very easily convert uh, you know convert this position uh, I'm showing you this game because it's the worst it's my worst game on uh, uh, well um, it was actually game five par much this uh, destroyer uh, you know and uh, to be very frank I the game I actually won it, it was a game in which I sacrificed the rook hey Jess Melissa it's very good to see you thank you for thank you for being here Quick shout out to Chess Melissa. So, um, so when all is said and done, I'm showing you because, um, you know, as uh, thanks, thanks for much, uh, Destroyer, for giving a shout out to Chess Melissa. It's interesting that in this is a probably a critical variation, and the game was basically lost. And even if you look at this particular report, you, the, it was roughly equal until I play knight g3, at which point it becomes into slide into nothing. Uh, oh, thank you, CDC Stormer. That's very greatly appreciated. We'll see how it goes tomorrow against Sergey Karyakin. So, um, you know, I can say that I was rusty, I can say that this was a warm-up game, I can say whatever needs to be said, or whatever, but this was not a very good start. So I'm gonna, uh, what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna s show you the next game that was contested in this, uh, in the similar, uh, okay, hold on, uh, in, this, in, in the same opening. And as you can tell, we actually, this was a significantly better game for me. Uh, let's turn the analysis board. All right. Oh, you're more than welcome. So anyway, E4, C6. And, you know, D4, D5, E5, C5. And 92, I'm still playing 92, but this time, uh, you know, 
I've had a chance to look at the quick uh, analysis and, you know, she, instead Laura played knight d4, she changed the line. Okay, this is actually a better line for white. And interesting thing here is that, uh, hey, Lusasso, thank you for the follow. That's very greatly appreciated. Thank you. So interesting thing here is that, you know, this is fairly straightforward uh, and I can say this, these are basically more or less book moves. This is more or less standard theory. Uh, the idea between Botwin and Carlsen taking on c5 or if Black Saint takes on d4 is this is a very great good out outpost for the, for the white knight. Uh, one of the white knights and that's one of the key aspects of white white's advantage in this position anyway so after c3 excellent move a6 bishop d3 all standard moves uh, uh, you know development moves it's uh, uh, you know computer here prefers queen e2 to castle i kind of was happy to get away with uh, with any kind of possible pins I can say that uh, compared to the very first game, I came out of opening slightly better, which I was very, um, I was very happy with this opening. Oh yes, please, can we, I would like, please let's, uh, let's give a shout out to Jess Melissa's YouTube profile. She, thank you. Thank you, Jess Lyons. Anyway, so we continue and uh, rookie one, all of these are perfect moves. Bishop c5 is a move because the strategic battle in this in this opening is centered around two, two key center fields. One is a fight for d4, basically black needs to undermine the outpost, and this pawn uh, is uh, attacked twice and defended twice, uh, twice on e5, and that's a potential weakness. So it's a very... You know, it's a very good, I think it was a very good position for white. A bishop c2, preparing some future, you know, bishop c2, queen d3, battery, and, you know, the next move to follow soon is h4 to get rid of this knight on g6, which is basically the sole defender of the black king, in case black king castles on the king side. Anyway, so... Rook c8, um, preparing for some potential threats on the soon-to-be-open c file. h4, of course, I wanted to get rid of the knight on g6. And, uh, you know, knight c7, which uh, computer considers an accuracy, but it's a tricky move because it attacks the e5 pawn for the third time. And, uh, you know... Laura is a two-time world champion. She was a world champion for under 16 to um, uh, when she was 14 and she was also under 16, under 18 world champion. She is a very strong player. I'll never be anywhere near her strength. But uh, she likes to grab pawns. And, uh, you know, and that's, you know, in, in the zen of this position, I think required a little bit of defense. Oh, Korean American chess noob, to answer your question, um, in addition to this analysis, I frankly have uh, weekly sessions and they're on stream. And I'm actually going to show you the show you the links. I have weekly sessions with Elizabeth, the international master, Elizabeth Becht. Uh, and we actually stream that. It's every Wednesday at 7 a.m. East New York time. And I also have sessions with uh, uh, Ale uh, International Master Alex Estane Lopez, who is, uh, we, we stream those on Fridays at 6 a.m. Eastern. Uh, and everybody is welcome to join. It's, uh, as a matter of fact, called audience is encouraged to participate. In addition to this, I use Chessable a lot. Um, it's a website that I uh, use a lot when I want to do self-study and, you know, 
uh, I'm not sure how well it works or whether it works for everybody, but I really like it. And I use Chessable not exactly in the way it's supposed to be used uh, or the Chessable or creators want to, wanted it to be used. I like to review the lines in the opening and then actually practice, do tactical training, training there. Hopefully that answers your question. Uh, hey, Cupism is online. It's it's doing well. I am I'm having a quick uh, my best losses stream on Monday as usual, and I'm kind of trying to figure out what I'm going to do against Sergey Karyakin tomorrow. Anyway, uh, I'm going to just do a quick uh, Karyakin uh, shout out in the chat for you guys. All right. So to continue, uh, continue this game. I kind of felt that I was better here because uh, uh, hold on. after bishop e3, which is actually not the best move, uh, knight e5, frankly I couldn't care less about that pawn because I thought that uh, after bishop f4, uh, I am definitely better and I definitely have more than compensation because this pin is kind of difficult to counter because if you if f6 is played, uh, this pawn on e6, which is already targeted by the knight, is in danger. Uh, oh, thank you. She played with Alexandra Kosinuk. Ellie? Yes, I can I can imagine. They are both very strong. I mean, Ellie needs, I think, 20 elo, point to, elo points to be a grand, uh, uh, open grandmaster. And Alexandra Kostinuk is a former world champion, a very strong grandmaster. Hey, Halvard, my friend. It's very good to see you. Thank you. Yes, Chess Lions, Karyakin is too strong. I agree. I am, I am in trouble. So I, I assume that in this position, I didn't expect her to play bishop d6. I kind of expected that she was going to exchange, uh, you know, that she's going to play something like f6. And then I'm going to play against the pawn on e6, and the fact that I'm down a pawn would not really matter. Uh, with that in mind, very frankly, you know, I if I don't think taking on e4 was actually the right decision here. So, you know, oh yes, Halbert, then for the record, playing against Karyakin, the idea there is to just to, you know, get Sergei to stream more on Twitch. So hopefully that will that will be the end result. Ah, thanks, uh, Parmosh Destroy. I always have uh, faith in Lizzie. She is great. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah, I wouldn't call it an ultimate showdown. It's a more or less a, a 50-year-old amateur trying. Let me put it this way: If I was running a race against Usain Bolt, uh, you know, right right now, that's basically how I feel. So we'll see. Uh, oh, good, uh, Halvard, congratulations, that's very good to see you. Anyway, so, uh, you know, I felt that after Queen H5, which is, uh, which is actually a pretty tricky move, and I'll show you why, I thought that I was definitely better and maybe even winning. I was hoping that she was going to play something like G6, at which case I was actually going to take it with a queen, and after I'm gonna actually, it's a sufficiently pretty, and believe it or not, that's actually the best move, best line according to the computer. I'm surprised. Um, so g6, queen e5, bishop e5, rook e5, and then, uh, you know, white is gonna, after says queen d8, which is computer likes, white is gonna correct uh, the rook on h8 and. Uh, it's gonna be an interesting, you know, two p two pieces and a rook against uh, against the against the queen, and I felt I would love to play that, but uh, uh, but Laura played a different game, which computer actually doesn't like, uh, but it's probably giving her better practical chances. And what happened here is, you know, computer gives this bishop g6 two exclamation marks, okay? The idea here is that after force bishop g, uh, fg6, uh, this pawn on e6 is very weak. At least that's why, that's my, that was my thinking. Oh, thank you, Korean American chess noob, that means a lot. It's, uh, you know, uh, when... 
uh, I wouldn't really call myself humble, but I was, uh, you know, uh, I think uh, striving to learn is always a good thing and we'll see. And, uh, you know, uh, let me put it this way. If uh, Chuck Webner, who was a guy who actually knocked down Muhammad Ali at the peak when Muhammad Ali was in prime, Chuck Webner, who was a role model for uh, um, um, He's my role model. Let's let's see what happens tomorrow. I, I have nothing to lose. Anyway, so here, uh, you know, I didn't play the best move. Uh, Bishop d6 is actually uh, me trying to generate, to simplify the position. There was no need for it. I could have just, uh, you know, grabbed the pawn on d5 and, you know, all the computer, that, that would have been the simplest move. And... Uh, here is where the game started a little bit uh, slipping, um, you know, slip, uh, position starts slipping from, from me, if you, if you want. Hey, Dirkie, my friend, it's very good to see you. Thank you so, thank you for being here. Uh, it's very good to hear. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yes, the Parmarch destroy. maybe in my dreams, but thank you. That's very kind of you to say. Anyway, so I played bishop d6, queen d6, queen e5, and you see that basically in, uh, in exercising my usual bias for simplification, I have basically abandoned the bulk of my advantage in this position. And I do this a lot, and it's, uh, if you want, it's a mental loss. I thought this was a very easily won position for white, and also, here is uh, for a change when, you know, playing an adoption match mentally goes against you. You know, I, for me to win the match, all I needed to do is to draw. And, uh, you know, I said, well, you know what, I can easily, I should be able to draw this and definitely better. So, huh, thank you. Thank you, Chess Melissa. That's very kind of you. But we'll see what happens. A puncher's chance is always there. Anyway, so queen e5 and then queen e5, rook e5. And by any standard, this is a better position for white, uh, more comfortable, although white is a pawn down. It has a dominant knight. This bishop is a little bit more than a tall pawn. Uh, and, you know, I probably overestimated my position here. Anyway, so king f7 is an easy best move. Rook a1, normal, uh, basically taking the pawn on e6 under the gun. And then rook e3, which is the, you know, not a bad move, but not the best. Basically, the strategy for white in this position was to, should have been, and I actually analyzed this position a little bit further, uh, Oh, thank you, 2511. That's that's very kind of you. Hey, Max, it's very good to see you, my friend. Thank you. I'm happy to see you here. Uh, so I should have played knight f3 and put the knight on e5, where it would be in an absolutely dominant position. It would have, uh, you know, would have basically blocked both of these pawns. Uh, I was kind of trying to play rook f3 and also reinforce rook, uh, you know, pawn on c3 because I was assuming correctly that uh, Laura is going to push on b5 and then do b, b4, kind of minority attack type of a sequence, and we'll see. Anyway, uh, bottom line, a5, she's preparing that minority attack. I finally play knight f3 h6 g4 is an inaccuracy in a sense that it creates a weakness here and also mobilizes uh, black pawns on the on the queen side i shouldn't have played that move to be frank i only was down to 15 seconds and i really was a little bit at a loss what to play so i just played uh, you know g4 not not the best decision and anyway so 
uh, b4, b5 was expected move, uh, g5, in other words, I'm trying to create an outpost for the knight on g5, b4, continuation of a very good plan that, uh, you know, it was expected. One thing that I learned from uh, my, my dear friend and coach, Alex, Alex Stana Lopez, international master and a great coach is, uh, you know, one thing that I was blind before I started this adventure and into proving my chest was to always mind of pawn breakthroughs. And, you know, pawn breakthrough for black here is uh, obviously, you know, B4. It undermines white's chain and also creates a potentially isolated pawn on C3, which is what happened in this game. Anyway, so I took on H6, which is perfectly fine move. Hey, 2511, thank you for the cheer. That's very greatly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Uh, Halvard, I'll be very honest with you, I played, I think, 21 match against players that are three or 400 points stronger than me, and I have to say, it was a fa it's a, the best uh, learning experience one can possibly have. It's, uh, it's a really, really great, great way to learn, and I'm actually looking forward to playing against Sergei tomorrow, whatever happens. Hey, Davina! It's very good to see you. Thank you for joining us. I'm showing the games for my match with WGM Laura, Laura Onuk of Chequitas yesterday. Anyway, so, so taking on GH6 and you see why this whole G4, G5 thing didn't work. Uh, end result is white doesn't have an outpost on G5. And all of a sudden, I have created a potential, you know, there is a potential passed pawn on the queen side and I doubled black pawns. It was just not the right decision. All right, knight d4, uh, queen f6. And here is where, you know, lack of time is starting to make itself felt. I'm still, you know, as the, my favorite... Uh, um, you know, emote shows, and I'm gonna actually spam it. Uh, oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, it's you know, too old, too slow. Uh, it's uh, you know, so I could. I'm my play is there, and I'm not very proud actually. F4, I although computer likes it, it's not the bad, the best move. And you see, the position went from being completely won maybe 10 moves ago to a position that's really not that good. Um, in other words, the strengths of the white position are being undermined. The outpost on d4 is undermined. The doubled pawns on g file are no longer there and so on. Uh, Barbaretti, to answer your question about how to secure a match with uh, Grandmaster Karyakin, uh, that's one of the, uh, you know, benefits of, uh, you know, being a big supporter of chess on Twitch and also a uh, huge debt of gratitude for organizing the match goes to photo chess Maria Yemeyanova with, uh, you know, uh, and let me give a, sh a she basically helped uh, to organize the match. She is, she's amazing streamer and a friend and please give her, a, give her a huge shout out and, and a follow. She definitely deserves it. Anyway, so this is already a lost position for white objectively and uh, you know um, playing these types of end games was never one of my strong the strongest suits and after you know and here is where i basically flagged in a position that uh, you know maybe maybe be described that's virtually lost and practically lost but maybe tenable Computer evaluation here, and this is not the greatest engines in the history of universe, says it's minus 112 if you look up here, but objectively it felt, fell lost. And I didn't feel very comfortable in this position, especially not with, uh, you know, five seconds left on the clock. So, uh, you know, if you look at the graph again, the computer says one player was winning by gate it away. There was a moment when it was like here, when it was 4.3. Uh, and very frankly, the reason I'm showing you this game is, you know, 
I sh I shouldn't have let the you know the foot of the gas pedal. I had one minute and two seconds. I should have just taken on you know taken on d5 or even you know even move the queen away or whatever. It was uh, you know you know the sequence here is queen queen takes on d5 which is actually not the best move but then after knight f4 i had knight e6 and i didn't want to go into that and i should have and uh, this would have been a very easily won position and i just didn't go there uh, I decided, okay, I have a one position, all I need to do is draw, I converted into something that I thought was drawn, and it was drawn, but then I let the, even the draw slip. Anyway, mm, it's not uncommon for this to happen when you have uh, weaker players playing stronger players, and very frankly, uh, let, me, let me say this, uh, I don't expect m me uh, to have any chances against Sergei tomorrow. I really don't. Uh, may, you know, but uh, if I have one chance and that chance be like this and I manage to drop, drop this uh, against Sergei, I am going to be pretty upset myself. And I need to really learn how not to do this. It's, uh, it's not so much a chest strength problem. It's a, it's, it's a psychological problem to, to use. Uh, to use a more precise word. Okay, so, but, uh, so those two games that I show you are the two sample games that we played in a Botvinnik Karl's variation of Karo Khan. Uh, Laura decided to play Bishop F5 in one game, and I have there an opening that I have actually collected quite a lot of scalps of very strong players. It's basically bishop g, g5 variation in, in tal advance uh, variation, it, tal variation of advanced Karakan. Um, this is co being called my best losses. So, hey, thank you, Dirkia. Yes, I'm looking forward to enjoying the ride. Looking forward to seeing you here. And she just played bishop f5, and I basically just uh, used uh, my experience in this position, which for once was actually bigger than hers, to win that game and therefore avoid adoption. Uh, more interesting from a standpoint of uh, what I gained from this match is actually from two games that I played as... Uh, hey, evil-minded, it's very good to see you, thank you is that we contested uh, virtually all our five games in a single variation of King's Indian defense. And I'm going to show you now two games that we played. And it's a basically Fiacato variation of King's Indian. And frankly, uh, and this is probably something that's the highest value for me of this match, is I gained I found out the Zen of this particular position, of this particular opening. Uh, and you will see if you want some part of, uh, of that development. Let me show you, this is basically game number three. And mind you, this, uh, this moment the adoption is still on the plate. So anyway, d4, knight f6, c4, g6, it's king indian, knight f3. Bishop g6, g3, all book moves, all part of the standard opening repertoire. And one thing about King's Indian that I think anybody who plays King's Indian in the age of computer engines knows, computer always uh, undervalues black chances in King's Indian defense. Um, so anyway, Fianchetto variation, knight c3, Knight c6, uh, castles, a6, and sometimes, you know, they, these, these people call it Carlsberg variation. Um, you know, I'm, I like this knight c6, a6 uh, setup. I played against uh, regular Kings Indian, and I, I kind of like the setup. Obviously, Fianchetto variation is much different because standard black plan of attacking on the king's side really doesn't work. 
or works with several caveats and I'll show you some of those caveats there. Um, anyway, so after b3, uh, rook b8, knight d5, e6, all of those are standard moves, knight f6, queen f6, bishop g5, queen f5, uh, and queen d2, and here is here is a full admission. I actually have, up to this point, I'm in prep because all these is the lines um, was something that Laura already played. Uh, you know, this is the line that she normally plays. She plays this, uh, knight d5, or instead of knight d5, she also plays, plays bishop b2, which I think is actually a better move for white. But this he had, I think she had like four or five games in this particular variation. I have to say something, it's very tricky to play queen f5 and the whole take on f6 because the, the queen can easily be trapped, but it's actually just barely not trappable. Uh, anyway, the game continued, queen d2, that's a normal move. And I took on d4, which uh, is where my basically prep ended and the variation the reason variation is basically take on d4 twice and then take on g5 and you know black is uh, a pawn up in this position however you know white has full compensation because this bishop is a true monster this bishop is basically a disaster this uh, rook is um, is kind of awkwardly placed, and you have these lovely holes around the black king. So, um, to us, so Korean American chess noobs, uh, do you play certain favorite openings uh, and why? Well, um, yes, I do. Uh, basically, if you're playing, you want to play opening that take advantage of uh, your, what are your strengths. Um, if you are a strong positional player, you're, gonna, you're obviously not going to play gambit. Or you're not going to play wild openings, or you're not going to uh, play the most aggressive, you know, Yugoslav attack against dragon and so on and so forth. If you're an aggressive player, you're going to tailor openings to suit your style. Also, and this is what I do, I actually enjoy doing this. It's, I think it's useful when you play stronger players. I try to tailor my opening preparation, my openings towards the opponent. If I find the opponent routinely plays some opening that has um, a weakness or a bad line, uh, if, you, if I can take advantage of it, that's, uh, that's, I think, fair game and actually, you know, one way to do it. Uh, I hope that answers your question. So, uh, the awkwardness of the rook is rather obvious and obviously Laura took advantage of it. Queen a7 is a perfectly, is a perfectly good move. Actually, computer considers it the best move. And Laura immediately went to hey Corina Miner Chess Noob, thank you for the cheer. That's very greatly appreciated. I'm happy to help. So anyway, uh yes it's adoption match versus Laura Unuk. Anyway, so Bishop B7 and this is you know I, I'm the last person to make to say anything bad against uh, Laura. She's a great person and a great friend. But she likes to pawn grab and uh, to be quite frank i kind of set up sprung here i played a move that is actually not the best move which is queen c5 because i had a little trap for her and i actually did, i spent a minute thinking whether i want to go for it or not and i ended up going for it it and actually turned out to be beneficial she grabbed the pawn on a6 which is a dangerous move. And the dangerous move is that after d5, uh, you know, these two, two, you know, now white has a, an extra pawn, but both queen and bishop are very awkwardly placed and prone to be, uh, uh, you know, prone to be trapped. And uh, 
yeah, Prashak, I hear you. But uh, yes, and Aspern, I agree with you. Double fee and Keto setup for white is the is difficult to play against. And one uh, one of the huge benefits for me as a Kings Indian player is, frankly, I got the Zen about how to. I think I figured out how to play against uh, uh, double fee and Keto. And I'll show you that in my in my in the next game. I'm gonna sh I'm gonna show on this stream. Anyway, so. After queen a6, uh, you know, rook d1, and rook d1 is actually a huge mistake because uh, white doesn't have any time to lose here. Uh, it's Im what's immediately needed is to start figuring out a way how to extricate the queen from here. And frankly, I didn't even see this computer line while I was playing, which I'm going to show you. So it's e a4, d c4, b c4, uh, you know, which is the only way the this gets extricated. I didn't see, I was under the impression that uh, I didn't see a3 as a potential continuation. Why is a3, uh, a3 significant? It's significant because if uh, white plays something different, say for example, rook d1, which is actually a pretty big blunder, Black has queen b4, and all of a sudden, this bishop is gone, uh, because you know the only place where it can go is to play it's bishop c6, and after that, Black has uh, rook b6. So, which is what ended up actually is this what we ended up playing in the game? I'm pretty sure. Now she took on d5. I took on d5, and queen f6 is a very good move. I played bishop f5, which was a slight imprecision, and here I am in a minus 0.76 uh, position for 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 black, and I am actually quite happy. And here is why I'm showing you this game in addition, because it's actually a pretty illustrative game, the whole opening theory. One weakness that I have found in my play that very frankly, you know, I'm quite sure I share with a, quite a lot of plays. As a matter of fact, before uh, starting to stream, I watched the game in which my dear friend and mod in this channel, Sepper91, played against Alexandra Bottas. And he had a completely won position in an endgame uh, with just a pair of knights and he had three pawns to Alexandra's none. And Alexandra managed to draw that game. Uh, the delta with very strong and professional uh, you know, chess players in endgames is probably uh, the most, uh, the greatest, you know, we can have tactic, you know, I can have, actually I don't, but you know, my opening preparation is probably very good. My tactical equipment is deficient, but it's, I found it very hard and I still find it to convert. This is a one end game for black. Y yet I first, I managed to mess it up. Um, you know, it's, uh, actually I wasn't winning, but when, by the time I flagged, you know, it's, uh, I was, uh, the, the position was basically equal because at the end, and there's only a few more moves, this is still, you know, one for black. But then I made an error, which is this rook d6. And, you know, I'm also trying to figure out and I'm, you know, okay, I'm going to defeat that option. This is game three. This is a great result. You know, I'm beating Laura and so on. I have an adrenaline rush. I have a, you know, I can't calm myself. I'm not calculating properly. And I ended up messing this up. And, you know, and, you know, by the time it, the game ended, although she even made an errors, you know, this is an end game, which, you know, black is objectively better, probably winning, but you know, three connected pass pawns is pretty hard to do with, you know, when you have two seconds left on the clock. And very frankly, although there was a two second increment, two second increment for yours truly is not enough for me to continue to play effectively. That's simply the fact of life. Um, 
mercifully, you know, uh, I managed to win uh, in the very next game, uh, in which, uh, you know, it was basically a wild attack in which she basically had no... Um, in the end, I sacrificed the, my queen for the, her, her rook and converted it into an easily winnable uh, pawn endgame. But what I found it most difficult for me, and this is something I want to work on, is uh, figure out how to convert uh, these positions that are technically won in an, in, in, in an endgame. And I'm not talking about core end games. Uh, hey, Drunk Pyro, it's very good to see you. Thank you, my friend. Uh, and I'm gonna talk to uh, Elizabeth and Alex. In, in other words, my problem are not so much end games; it's strategic end games in which you are basically playing a position in which you have multiple pawns and maybe two, uh, one or two pieces. Uh, that's I found that part aspect of chess very hard. Anyway, so this was a loss. But, uh, you know, I managed to defeat adoption on the very, uh, on the very next game. So that, that was nice. And then we played, then uh, Laura actually won five hard-fought games in a row against me. So technically, she, uh, Laura succeeded in half adoption. Uh, but uh, I want to show you, and you see here, this is actually a perfect illustration uh, of my improvement. And we played this, you see, the computer really likes my play. I don't get 96.3% accuracy that often. It's, uh, you know, uh, and I'll show you the game. Uh, and I'm going to turn the analysis so you can see this. It's again, the same basically standard setup. The only difference here is that uh, Laura, instead of playing knight d5 here, played uh, played bishop e2. And she actually played both of these moves. She also played rook b1, an a3 line, and so on and so forth. But this is basically the standard setup in, uh, in King's Indian defense fianchetto variation, which frankly, I think I got a Zen how to play. And the Zen for me how to play against this is to have a standard Indian setup, forget about any king side attack and play on a play on the queen side. Rook or b8 and pushing b5 are great plans to play and you know don't let uh, white open up in center or you know have any counterplay necessarily in the center. Uh, in one of the games, actually more than one of the games, Laura put her pawn all the way to, to e6, but uh, that ended up being not the best strategic decisions, and you will see why. Um, so, in other words, you know, yes, this was a heartfelt match, a hard-fought match, and I think I got how to play against this uh, King's Indian, which is huge. So all of this is book up to this point and actually up to future points. Um, this looks weird, but this is actually perfectly playable because however silly it may seem, these, this knight is actually very well placed here. It defends this pawn, which basically means that, uh, you know, it's pretty hard for white to generate a concrete attack because believe it or not knight on f3 doesn't have that many moves to go to and playing something like say knight g5 is actually not a very good move because you know black can simply relinquish this pawn and then push bishop a6 and then you know taking on this pawn taking this pawn is actually fairly dangerous for white and here is why Let's assume that Laura takes on c6, takes on c6, queen c6, and what ends up happening is that this knight on e5 uh, was uh, exchanged itself, you know, and I don't even need to play bishop e2, I can just play, I mean, I didn't really look into it, but look at this, this is actually a bad move, but this bishop is... Uh, 
is a monster against the Black King, and that that's definitely worth a pawn. On top of it, that extra pawn is this pawn on e2, which is not gonna come into play anytime soon. Uh, yes, and you're right, uh, Bill Bill H. Uh, that's an odd setup. It was definitely part of the uh, of the prep. I actually prepped this whole line specifically for Laura, and I have actually, you know, and I kind of I have to admit I kind of like it. And I want to show you, you know, so after c6, you know, this position according to the engine is plus uh, 0.74. Um, you know, but I, I think this position is full of venom and it's pretty hard for, uh, you know, for white to take its advantage. This knight is nowhere. This knight is neutralizing this strong bishop and you will see what happened in the game. I'll, I'll actually show you this. Yeah, exactly. Once you get used to the optics, it's uh, very pleasant to, to play for black. And I think I, frankly, one of the benefits of this match for for this was, uh, was I figured out how to play this. Anyway, Smoper 21, uh, you know, there are quite a lot of good books for chess openings. I really don't use books that, for openings anymore. I use chessable courses uh, uh, for that are dedicated to specific openings. Um, some of them are better than the others, but all of them are very good. And, you know, uh, I think the best thing to do openings wise is to find the opening you like this YouTube style and then just run with it. Um, I also believe that uh, as a part of the opening preparation, you should adjust uh, for uh, your uh, for your opponent and that you should have a reasonable variation of uh, openings that one plays um, so anyway yeah starting out series of books is 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 excellent actually especially if you're first starting and thank you Dirkia for posting the link to chessable anyway so to continue this uh, uh, e4 and incidentally we played this line twice the idea between e4 is to push e5 and the trick after e5 is that you really should not exchange because it's not to black's advantage to open up the center because then these bishops basically dominate oops wrong arrow but you get the idea uh, so it's best to keep the center closed in this position lesson learned anyway so bishop a6 is a normal move i have actually seen this that this move in my prep oh, no not in this exact line and this is actually a position that frankly can be considered dynamically equal and very frankly i almost like this game that i lost better than the game i won from the terms of my play because you know, I, uh, the game I won was basically an opening that Laura was completely unfamiliar with and just wanted to mix up and I, she was in my opening prep. And this is an opening that I have just acquired early before the match. So anyway, so bishop e5, that's actually a standard, uh, standard move here. It reinforces this pawn on c6. So basically this pawn is now doubly protected by light pieces and it's, uh, you know, it cannot really be captured that easily. And after e5, I played knight d5, which was incidentally a computer recommendation from a game that I actually lost when a chain blundered and took on e5. Anyway, e6, which doesn't work in this position. And the reason it doesn't work with this position is that, you know, this pawn now closes the center, which benefits black and also allows black to play f5, which is, you know, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, yeah, exactly. Dunk Pyro, the, you know, the pawn is the pawn on e6 is actually just a blocker. It's not really doing anything. The pieces are developed. The, this bishop has gone away and this bishop is actually very strong in g7. f5 is a, one of the moves that I'm most proud in the whole match. It's, it's basically a beginning of a right plan. So after h4, 
Uh, take on A4, which is a standard theme in this, that uh, basically after taking on A4, you can have all sorts of potential counterplay, put the queen on B6, question D4, and so on and so forth. And then take on A4, and then queen B6, which is the reason why we basically sacrifice the bishop, the bishop pair, so the queen can come here. And the idea behind the whole exchange is once black push, pushes b3 on the, you know, uh, yeah, I, I kind of like it, beer, belly, uh, beer bully, it's uh, uh, good or not, I, I've, I'll, let me put it this way, I would play it again, we can agree to disagree. Anyway, uh, so... Here is the plan. The plan is basically to push b3 and all of a sudden with a uh, rook on b8 and queen on b6, it's black who dominates the b5. And that's actually the key motive when uh, when we are pl when one plays fianchetto in this particular variation. Uh, and I actually we played multiple games like this that I managed to lose all of them, but uh, the this particular uh, battery of white on the C file is basically hitting this pawn on C6, which is miraculously being protected by this knight on A5, and it's basically virtually invulnerable there. The, the relevant battery that's actually going to blast through is the black's battery on, on the B file. And... I felt at this particular moment that I am, yeah, s sorry about, sorry about that uh, bear bully. It's my, uh, my bad, my apologies. Everybody always, uh, you know, uh, butchers my name, so I feel bad when I butcher someone else's name. My apologies. Anyway, ah, thank you, Dirk, for gifting a sub to bear bully. Thank you. All right. Anyway, so queen b3, uh, I felt at that time that exchanging was actually better for better for uh, white. And a similar position, actually, um, uh, Laura exchanged queens. But anyway, let's continue with the continuation. Rook b4, obviously this pawn on a4 is now weak. And rook rook and queen have basically penetrated onto white side this bishop is not doing much this uh, pawn is about to be pushed to f4 this knight is gonna go and you know end up on c4 or on b3 and it's gonna these cavalry is gonna become monstrous very quickly and here is another thing this battery on white to continue the battery theme on e file is hitting e6 which basically means that this pawn on e6 is becomes a black's defender which is why that e6 whole plan really doesn't work all right so h5 obviously pawn challenge i at that time i said you know what i'm gonna let her let her take on g6 i don't think there is anything there and oh Hadi Badruj, thank you for the follow. That's very great. We appreciate it. Thank you, my friend. That's very nice. Uh, H5, and then, you know, we are continuing to pile. I took on A4, takes on G6, takes on G6. Uh, knight H4, and King H7, which computer prefers to Rook A2, but I kind of like the move. Here is the funny thing is, it's very hard for white to make any progress here because you know by the time rooks get over to the h file you know you have to remove the knight you have to remove the king twice you have to remove the bishop it's a pretty awkward position exactly drunk pyro white is really wishing she doesn't have the pawn on e6 actually if we were to subtract this pawn uh, black would have been in trouble, but this pawn is the be uh, is basically a black's defender. All right, so queen h2, continuing the plan, trying to get the rook off uh, h2, and here is rook a2 is a perfectly fine move, uh, and here is where uh, you know yours truly starts making blunders. 
here, instead of uh, playing knight f6, I should have just pushed f4, and that's, uh, you know, that's basically curtains. It's the computer says it's minus six, minus six point one two, and it's really, you know, first, you know, there is a threat of this check that cannot be taken because of this pin. So all of a sudden, blacks, all blacks' heavy pieces are very well placed. This is a queen on b3, rook on a2, and a whole nine yards. I should have just pushed f4, and I wish I did, because that's almost, you know, that's a crushing attack. But I didn't, so what I played was knight f6, which is far from losing, but it's a waste of time. And in positions like these, when, you know, everything is hanging by a thread, you don't really have, obviously, you know, time to lose. Oh, uh, and, oh, guys, I don't know if we received a raid that I missed, but just uh, for those people who have joined us recently, just a very quick uh, uh, description. This is uh, my best losses Monday. I'm sure... Uh, I'm showing games I played against WGM Laura Unuk of the Chiquitas yesterday. Welcome, welcome guys. This is a channel. This is a weekly feature of Nicholas' channel. Every Monday at 8 p.m. I stream my best losses. Also tomorrow, uh, pr quick program announcement. I'm playing an adop another adoption match. It's against uh, Grandmaster Sergei Karyakin, who in 2016 played against the Mar Magnus Carlsen for the World Championship. So that's one of the very first appearances of Grandmaster Karyakin on Twitch. And I'm very look much looking forward to the match. Not so much because I have any chances of success in that match. The purpose of the match is to uh, get uh, get uh, Grandmaster Karyakin to play play more. Hey J928, that's uh, very greatly appreciated. Thank you so much for gifting gifting the subs. Thank you. So the purpose of it is to bring Sir Grandmaster Karyakin to Twitch. That's tomorrow at this channel at uh, noon Eastern. So we'll see. And I'm glad that the Korean American chess noob got, got the sub and thank you. Anyway, so this is, uh, we are analyzing one of the late, late games. I think this is game seven from the match. Uh, this is, I'm black and this is basically a moment when I missed the opportunity to push F4 and maybe, you know, have an advantage or have a minus six advantage against a strong woman grandmaster who is probably uh, the best uh, chess player in uh, in slovenian history but anyway so i play knight f6 which is okay move it's a little bit of a waste time but doesn't drop the whole advantage so after knight f6 uh, king g1 king runs away from the check i played knight g4 which is inaccuracy because uh, you know instead of uh, instead of knight g4 uh, black has significantly better moves uh, you know a any kind of queen move that basically prevented rook e2 would have been better so queen a4 would probably best bishop h6 but again you know it's not the worst move in history of universe because it continues to exert pressure, pressure on F2. And uh, anyway, so to continue this uh, theme and oh yeah, Opfreshaf, I read your comment, read your comment. Yeah, exactly. It's um, yeah, you know what? I don't, you know, I don't like looking at the comp computer evaluation anymore but uh, I think uh, very frankly and you know I started playing chess at the time when computers weren't weren't very strong um, or weren't readily available even even so but uh, you know there is something to be said about having a grandmaster analyzing at your fingertips and uh, while it is also true that uh, computers do not play very nice chess and uh, it's also true that uh, they do not blunder and sometimes offer 
offer evaluate offer offer us to see what moves that we otherwise would have missed. I don't know, that came out jumbled, but I think you understand what, you, what I'm saying. Anyway, all right, so again, this is still a winning position for black. Uh, we, uh, rookie two was the plan that basically began and that basically I was supposed to play queen a4 to counter. That's basically a defensive move. It defends f2. I frankly, at that time, I was starting to get low on time. I didn't even see that plan. I was just uh, hoping to pile on an F2. Uh, I played F4, which computer, and to continue the theme of, the com uh, of computers in chess, computer considers, considers a mistake because it kind of drops the advantage. But if you look closer, it drops the advantage in the, in the one line that actually Laura played. But the path for uh, actually equalization is fairly narrow. Uh, and Laura actually found the first few moves here. Rook c3 is a move that's, uh, that first gets the queen off, this, uh, off its perch and also defends g3. And then I played queen a4, which is an obvious move. And then rook a2 is a huge mistake because it uh, you know allows allows black queen to activate and to replace the rook on a2 uh, much better move in this position would have been knight g6 but to be very frank again and this is to continue the theme about computers and chess you see uh first best move is knight g6 which is you know equality and then all the other moves are result in a win for black. And to be honest with you, knight g6 is a move that for human, especially in a blitz game, is far from obvious. So I honestly, if, we were, if I was white, I wouldn't have even considered it because it's far from the obvious move. And, uh, you know, anyway. And if you look at the line the computer is playing, it's... Uh, it's basically knight g6, uh, rook e2, knight f8. Uh, you know, it's not a line that comes naturally to a human chess player. So I played queen a4, Laura took on a2, I took on a2, and I'm here back winning. In a winning position, she played bishop e4, which is quite, it's the best move. It's, she's attacking the pawn on g6. And, uh, you know, I had just enough time to analyze that I can safely take on f2, on g3, because this really is, doesn't have anything. And she took on g3, which is actually not a good move. And here is where I basically, if you want, lost the game. What I needed to do here, and I should have, in retrospect, uh, Yes, uh, Bill Village, it's, it's completely crazy line. I, I couldn't agree more. What I should have found here, and I should have found here, and the commentators were actually, I, I watched the WOD, um, I don't hear the commentators during, uh, during the game, they were screaming, play Rook F2. And Rook F2 would have basically won the game for, for white, because uh, for black, because the queen really doesn't have anywhere to go and the best chance is to play this but this uh, you know is not a pleasant position there is all sorts of very nasty mating threats in the position and you know but i didn't play it i felt that knight f2 is safer and then of course uh uh, Laura found the best continuation, and here is where you truly managed to flag in the position. Um, yeah, that's that's tough to find within five seconds, and I don't necessarily mind this. So, what's uh, what is the purpose of me show, showing this game? I'm showing you this game because I felt that uh, night. Uh, Knight h6, oh, here, yeah, in where drank Pyra, uh, 
in here, let's see, oh, in here, uh, I'm sorry, I'm not terribly good about it, oh, you mean taking this, taking rook g6 here, okay, taking knight g6 here, then, uh, okay, knight h3, the problem with knight h3 that, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's, queen takes to an h3 and that's actually not a very good position for, for white. Yeah, that, you know, that's, that's, unfortunately, that's not an option. Hey, Rage8, thank you for the follow. That's very greatly appreciated. Thank you. Yeah, here, no, no, I understand. Uh, yeah, that's, sadly, that doesn't work, I wish. Anyway, but here is the thing. Um, I have lost this game. I have actually lost all the games I played as black in this position. We contested uh, as black in this match. And we contested lots of bishop, uh, uh, king's Indian, fiaketa variation. I think I got how to play this position now. I'm going to be, next time I play it, I'm going to be in my comfort zone. And uh, very frankly, that's, uh, that's already a huge benefit of playing matches against very strong opposition. And it looks like we got another ba batch of new viewers. Uh, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Just a very quick program announcement. This is my best losses Monday. I'm analyzing every Monday at 8 p.m. games that I have lost, which for the purpose of, uh, for the self-educational purposes, if you want, I think that uh, one can best learn from one's losses rather than wins. Hey, Kasemi Mali, it's very good to see you. Thank you, my friend. Uh, thank you, Isgrimet, for the follow. That's also very greatly appreciated. Uh, these games uh, are with, uh, uh, from the adoption match. I played against WGM Laura, Laura Unuk of Chiquitas. She's a Slovenian champion. She was a world champion under 16 and under 18. She's a very strong player and she's also a great streamer, a great friend. If you don't mind one of the mods, just give a quick shout out to Chiquitas in the chat for the people who have recently joined. Um, I managed, for what's worth, I managed to avoid adoption in, uh, in game five. And uh, also, uh, we ha have another adoption match tomorrow at noon against the Grandmaster Sergei Karyakin. Sergei Karyakin is a very strong Grandmaster. I think he has been the youngest Grandmaster in history. He became Grandmaster at the age of 12. And I think that record still hasn't been broken. He played a match for World Championship against uh, Magnus Carlsen in 2016. I'm introducing Karyakin just in case some of the new viewers haven't, haven't known about it. And for the record, Max, uh, Andrea Bottas didn't know who Karyakin was. For not, No criticism for, for Andrea. So the purpose of the match is not for me to even try to win, though I will try to win. Uh, the difference is strength is too, too high. The purpose of the match is to maybe induce Grandmaster Kayakin to come to Twitch to, to stream. So please, uh, you know, feel, please feel free to come. It would be great to see a, a large number of people join. It will definitely encourage Sergey to stream more. Anyway, the last game I'm going to show you from the match is actually the very last game that I actually played. Uh, that uh, I played as white, and if you look closer, it's probably it's my highest accuracy game in the whole match, and that includes the accuracy game based on uh, uh, including the game I have won. And if you look closer, this basically looks like a Grandmaster draw until the very end. And oh yes, uh, is the same Andre Bottas who for a while to join was a Beatle. I am a big supporter of Andre and so on, but yes, Andre Bottas uh, fought Elton John was a Beatle. That is true. Anyway, all right. So let me show you this game because it. Uh, if you remember what I was said. Uh, telling uh, saying about uh, playing strong players titled players grandmaster international master level players um, it's very hard to play uh, end games against them 
And anyway, so we played the, our good old Botvinnik cars yet again. And this time around, I've kind of figured, by this time I figured out how to play. And here I have even made a decision which computer doesn't like, but I felt it's justified to basically sacrifice the bishop pair for an open C file and basically a rather simplified position. And I'm gonna make a couple of more moves and just to sh show you a quick, discuss this, uh, this position. Um, uh, yeah, Max, it's right. Uh, giving them complicated position to give them a chance to blunder. Yes, that's perfectly fine. But very frankly, I actually wanted to, um, you know, it was game 10. And frankly, I wasn't that terribly concerned about being, uh, you know, half adopted. I wanted to see if I can, uh, you know, play this end game. In other words, I was almost challenging Laura to beat me in this end game. And frankly, I don't regret the decision. Um, but, you know, g6, it's perfectly fine move. The zen of this position is, yes, black has a bishop pair, but this bishop is a tall pawn. This bishop, on the other hand, is excellent because all the pawns of white are, or virtually all, are on dark squares, not on what to do on a g2, which basically means they have a great, uh, um, you know, interrelationship of covering covering very fields uh, so this bishop is much better than this bishop and frankly i would prefer to have a knight to a bishop in this position and uh, you know I, in retrospect i think that was the uh, right decision this position is basically dead draw and if it's not the draw then white is a little bit even a little bit better the plan for white in this was to, you know, bring the king into e3. So the one weakness of white position is the spawn on d4. And uh, make sure that black doesn't grab c5. And frankly, in focusing on not letting grab uh, uh, take advantage and grab c5, I ended up uh, misplaying this position. Though, surprisingly enough, um, the position remained a draw towards the very end. So, knight e2, defending d4, um, computer prefers rook c1, okay, computer b4, perfectly normal moves, king is going to e3, and here is, if you remember, here is uh, the first pawn break. Laura is uh, a classically trained chess player belonging to a very good Central or Eastern European school and she always looks for pawn breaks and uh, very frankly I, I was at this stage of my chess development I'm looking for them too and I expected this position and the choice here was you know, I really didn't want, you know, I didn't even consider this best computer line. A computer line is basically to exchange your c8 and then play rook b1. Uh, and then generate counterplay against this b7 pawn. And I'm actually going to show you the line that computer likes just for the heck of it. Uh, and computer consider this best that, you know, uh, white is better in this position because obviously the pawn on b7 is weak. Um, frankly, that's not five head chess for me. That's like seven head chess for me. I have, I didn't consider this. I didn't want to go there. So I basically played b5 to close the position because that favors my knight over the bishop pair. And also, you know, keeps this c file contested a4 which is actually the best move in this position not allowing uh, white to consolidate this pawn chain um, again laura is a very classically trained player and that was actually to be expected king e3 defending the pawn on d4 releasing the knight for other duties bishop a5 Again, position is that draw, bishop c5, I'm trying to, uh, you know, double the rooks. 
and p6 not allowing me to do it even at the cost of basically locking this bishop at a5 rook c1 is the best move and uh, you know h5 and here is my first if you want not most precise move there was no need for me to play h4 um Computer give this a thumbs up, but that's a, basically a psychological blunder. I basically wanted to prevent Laura from pushing another, creating another pawn breakthrough or opening the H file. But, you know, there is, there is really no need for that move. It's not like she can generate any counterplay there. Um, anyway, so after rook d8, I played rook d1, and this is a dead draw. Uh, g3, fine, uh, king d7 is considered an inaccuracy, and the reason it's an inaccuracy is because uh, it blocks this bishop. And the reason it blocks bishop is it allows white uh, to basically take advantage of this bishop on d3 and play rook c2. Uh, so technically, in this position, on the best play, white is better. Um, I have to admit that, you know, with five seconds on the clock, I didn't see this. And I'm not going to say that's the reason I lost the game, because the game was actually never lost, although both Laura and I thought it was. Um, is that... You know, I decided that I'm going to exchange rooks, which was a strategically bad decision. Not so much because it's uh, it loses the game, it doesn't, but it creates an uh, impression it, that it does. Because what is white going to do against bishop c3, bishop b2? The answer is very simple, and it's kind of silly nothing uh why because with a king on d7 uh white in this position has time you know, she played bishop c3 uh, white has time to play uh you know very simple here a bishop c2 and uh, you know king on d7 is blocking the bishop white black can play this White can play knight d3, bishop a3, bishop a4, and this is a deadly drawn position. My problem in here was I really didn't have enough time on the clock, and I didn't see that, uh, that sequence of bishop b2, bishop b3, so I froze because I thought I was in trouble and funny thing is that Laura thought that she was winning and then I flagged. Um, so let me put it this way. Uh, I wish I didn't lose this game obviously I'm as competitive as anyone uh, and I obviously it would have been nice to draw the very uh, final game of the match, game 10, which means that health adoption wouldn't have happened. Uh, the issue here is that, you know, I, that I basically missed the, missed the simple counterplay of playing bishop c2 in this position, and I shouldn't have. And... Uh, that continues the theme of how to play end games against very strong players and don't allow yourself to be on, uh, you know, basically swindled by them, to use a derogatory term. That's number one. And number two, uh, you know, I, the, I missed the opportunity that was given to me by this bad king d7 move you see that uh, you know basically it goes from zero to zero to almost one because i had here rook c2 and if white is able to double the rook in this position 
uh, white is basically winning. In other words, black is almost forced to go into this line that, you know, and then the best computer line is something ridiculous like rook e8, this, and then, you know, basically I would have been gaining the pawn because this bishop has nowhere to go. Instead, I decided to exchange the rooks and to play for draw. Anyway, uh, yeah, it's true, Max, it's exactly right, but uh, the fact the, that position radically changes after king d7, because king d7 blocks <laughs> bishop b5 is something that I should have noticed. Anyway, that's, um, that's why, you know, I ended up losing the game and also, you know, f at five seconds, my ELO goes down by probably three or four hundred points and so on and so forth. <laughs> anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. I certainly enjoyed playing against Laura. I obviously would have preferred a different score. I think I had plenty of opportunities, but on the plus side, it was a great learning op uh, opportunity. I was, I think I got the Zen of um, Fianchetto variation of King's Indian. And I'm very much looking forward to many more games. And after all, <coughs> this needs to be said, I did avoid adoption, so that's a great score. Again, thank you again for being here. Uh, this was a very enjoyable stream as always for me. Thank you. And please uh, come come and check out my match against Karyakin. Say hello to Sergey. We want him on Twitch. It would be great if we can induce him to stream. I'm working with Open Film Media to organize a match, uh, uh, an, another match or two for Sergey. So we'll, we'll see how that goes tomorrow. Uh, thank you guys, and now the most important question is, who are we going to raid? Let's see, oops, sorry guys, I didn't ra I always, so who is streaming now? Oops, shush. Alright, so let's see. Alright, uh, we have... There is St. Louis Chess Club. I don't see them here. I follow them. I don't think they're streaming. I think, uh, yeah, she, Nemo has already 4,000 viewers. So let's, uh, I'm going to send you guys to, to my dear friend and recent streamer, uh, Bullet Mercenary. Uh, he has recently started streaming as he's a great streamer. So let me, let me send you there. Uh, give him a shout and give, me a, give him a follow. Uh, and let's see. Uh, and uh, he's a very strong player and we want... Uh, there he is, Bullet Mercenary. Thank you guys, thank you again. I My next few streams are match against Sergey tomorrow at noon. Uh, New York time, then at 7 a.m. on Wednesday, I have another lesson with one and only international master Elizabeth Pecht. Then uh, on Friday, it's a session with international master Alex Estana Lopez. And finally, another open film media arena at, uh, uh, at 9 a.m. on Saturday. Finally, on on Sunday, at it's adoption time. I'm playing my third set series of matches with one and only great Alessia Santeramo. Thank you for being here. Thank you again. I am sending you to Bullet Mercenary and Sky Zero. Thank you for the follow. Thank you, Max. We'll see you guys soon. Bye.